Suppose we have a big curly program that includes somewhere in it this let expression. And let's suppose this let expression does get evaluated, so somewhere along the way our interpreter reaches this let expression, and then eventually it reaches the plus xy expression, and in that process it reaches the x expression. It's going to resolve x by doing a lookup in the environment, but where will x be in the environment? Of course the answer is that it's wherever there's a bind x in the environment, but we know more than that. Because this plus expression happens in the body of this let, we know that x will have just been bound to 88. There will be an extend environment with bind x88 just before interpreting this uh, body expression. So in fact, x will be the first thing in the environment. We don't have to know anything about the surrounding program uh, for this expression to know that x is going to be at the beginning. And that suggests that when we look in the environment looking up things by name, we're in a sense doing too much work because we could have predicted that x was going to be the first thing. If we change the uh, big program and change the example so that we ask about let y be 1 and plus xy, and we ask where is y going to be, well of course the answer is still the same. y is at the beginning. It wasn't about the name x or y, it was about what was the most recent let that got evaluated. Let's change the program again. Let's suppose that we end up at a let y be 1, let x be 2, plus xy. Where are x and y now? We can ask about both x and y in this case since we can see both of them. We know that x will be first, but we also know that y will be second. And that again is because when this let adds x to 2, it's adding to the environment that is the body for this let, where y was just added to 1. So the environment was built up backwards, uh, y equals 1 was added, and then x equals 2 was added. And again, we know that without knowing anything about the surrounding program that might add other things into the environment. If we change the program so that the plus xy is not immediately in the body of the let, but is under times, the answers are still the same. That's because times doesn't affect the environment. It's only let, or really lambda, let is just a pattern for lambda, um, that creates bindings in the environment. So we don't need to pay attention to this times to predict where x and y are going to be in the environment. If we have more bindings, we can keep playing this game. We just have to pay attention to more lets. So in this case, clearly, by the time we get to plus xy, uh, x is going to be in the first position. Where is y going to be? That x will have been added to an environment that has a z, which is added to an environment that has a w, which is added to an environment that has a y. So y is going to be the fourth. We can just count the enclosing lets to find the one that binds y to predict where this y is going to be found. Again, not dependent on the rest of the program. We should also only count the lets that are enclosing this y and not any other lets in the program. For example, there's a let q be 9 and q uh, right here that is near the y but actually has no effect on where the y is. That's because there's some environment when we get to this let. That environment is used for the right hand side where q is added. But once we look up q and return, the value that we bind for z uh, is added to the environment of the let. That is the one that just has w and y. So when we're trying to figure out where y is, uh, we know it's going to be the fourth thing, no matter what these right-hand side expressions look like. All that matters are the enclosing bindings for this reference to y. So the general point here is that for any expression, when we have variable references, we can predict without running the program, without looking at the whole program, without looking at other subparts of the program, where different variables are going to live in the environment. And we can use this fact that the location of a variable is going to be predictable to transform our programs in a way that will make them run faster or rely on less concepts at runtime, such as not having any, any names for variables at runtime.